to me, the uh, concept of endometritis is uh, a little bit oxymoronic. And I'll tell you why. Because in the normal uh, cycle of the endometrium, in the late secretory phase and throughout the menstrual phase, a good five, six, seven days of the normal endometrium, it is normally very whoppingly inflamed. But it is normally inflamed because we have neutrophils infiltrating the endometrial glands, which are now degenerating and preparing itself for the new cycle. So uh, you have to be very, very careful to diagnose endometritis of any type, especially if you are normally in the menstrual or later secretory phases. Nevertheless, there are true diseases called endometritis inflammation primarily of the endometrium. And as you might guess, our old friends staph and strep are always high on the list. Tuberculosis is a notoriously, uh, has a notorious affinity for the endometrium. And if you could think of the concept of PID in which primarily the tubal mucosa is inflamed, well, you know that that has a direct uh, pipeline into the uterus as well. So all of the PIDs uh, can have endometritis as a component. In addition, when things like the endometrium has been exposed to the outside world, like C-sections, you might expect inflammation of the endometrium. Here is a myometrium. Here's muscle. And you could see it looks like kind of normal, smooth muscle. And as you get more towards the endometrium over here, you can see there's a lot of hemorrhage, a lot of fibrin, a lot of inflammatory cells. And lo and behold, what are these big, ugly, nasty cells? Well, when we rattled off our big list of things that cause inflammation of the endometrium, I forgot to mention probably one of the most uh, common things, and that is what they call retained products of conception. Well, you know that products of conception means placenta and baby, and possibly decidua as well, although decidua is 100% maternal tissue, whereas placenta or syntrophoblast and cytoplast, chorionic villi, that's entirely babies. Sometimes there are parts of the uh, baby's placenta placental villi, which are retained, and they don't come out 100%. And these big, ugly, cancer-looking cells, which you probably thought was cancer, but don't feel bad. All the neophytes uh, believe this, are the normal, big, ugly cells that you see with placental villi. And the reason why they're big and ugly and nasty and invasive and malignant looking is because the placenta is the most nicely uh, malignant tumor that everybody has. They're growing fast. They need to invade in order for the baby to live. And here we go, uh, having a situation now that has been termed syncytial endometritis, secondary to retain products of conception, and the actual products that are retained now postpartum, causing a whopping inflammation throughout this entire endometrium, are the syncytiotrophoblastic cells of the mature placental villi. Uh, let's get a little bit of big of view. We can see very, very big blood vessels here. We can see a lot of fibrin, a lot of uh, neutrophils, a lot of inflammatory debris. But remember, fibrin and neutrophils in necrotic junk are a normal part of every uh, menstrual cycle. But when in addition you see these big, dark, ugly cells and the woman has just given birth to a baby, you know that this is retained products. It's endometritis secondary to that. And if you would like to use the adjective syncytial, because these look exactly like syncytiotrophoblast, because they are, you can call this syncytial endometritis. And I thank you very much.